Well, good morning, my friends. First things first, I want to drop the last of the tie-dye shirts off in the mail, get those out of here, and we have a great day today. We're going to a barbecue. What's up, Lionhearts? Well, that's right. If you looked off to the side and saw that suit over there, you probably have figured out that Michael's throwing the barbecue and that I'm returning his suit that he loaned Gregor for the Magic Castle. And I decided we're going to do our vlog not only of the barbecue, but we're also going to do our vlog out there because there's something right up old Topanga Canyon Road that I've wanted to see for a while. It has a pretty cool history. And since we're out there, I figure this is the best time to do it. So. We're going to take Jaw out for a walk, drop off the mail, run a few errands, and then head out to Michael's house. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, good morning, buddy. How are you? Are you ready for your morning walk? Let's do it, friend. And I felt I should bring something to the party, so I stopped by and got a peach pie. Trader Joe's. I'll take that out there. All right, I might as well do this over by Tailwaggers, and we can stop in and get Jaw a treat. It's like he knows he has a gift card to work off of. Go ahead. Go say hi to your friends. We're going to get him all four of these today. And ja is very smart because he always stops here if he sees one of the owners out here because he knows they will give him chicken. So of course he stopped and started sniffing around so they went in to get him some chicken. He's being very patient. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, he's getting cheese. He loves cheese. Look at that tail. All right, well, I'm making the drive out to Topanga Canyon now. We're going to stop and do a vlog along the way. Now, where we're going to make our stop today was a recording studio 40 years. Well, my friends, here we are in one of the most historic neighborhoods of musical artistry in Southern California. What's known as the Topanga Canyon. This storied history goes back to the 60s and 70s. People like Jim Morrison used to hang out in this canyon. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Linda Ronstadt, the birds. And today, we're taking a look at the former studio of Johnny Perez. And I don't have a clue what that is. What kind of machine that is, but weird. Now this, what looks to be a house right off of Topanga Canyon, was once a studio that people like Bob Dylan, Sting, Robert Plant, all recorded in. Now this goes back to 1972 and it's literally right here, right off the little old Topanga Canyon Road. And from 1972 until, as far as I know, 2012, this was an operating studio with both vintage and new equipment in it. Now, it had multiple owners over its 40 year time, but the most notable one was a Sir Douglas Quintet drummer, Johnny Perez, who everyone knew as mainly the the man of this studio and throughout his time like i said he had neil young robert plant bobby mcferrin he had uh bob dylan sting and they all recorded here now this was not only a recording studio but it was also one of those live-in facilities so that you could really get into your environment and the property goes you can tell it's kind of a different color back in there but the studio entrance was over here where this little uh, brown kind of wooded area is and then there were also living condos back behind it. Now it was up for sale after Johnny Perez died in 2012 and I haven't been able to find out who bought it or if it's still a functioning studio in any regard. But um, when it was sold, it was sold with I believe a lot of the equipment and it had a special acoustic room. Now I think that it must still be a recording studio in some way because I can see, you won't be able to see it on camera, but there's bracketing going across that window in there that makes it look like they would have had, uh, you know, microphones or something coming down to record drums. And then the compound goes even further back into here. 
you can tell there's like a trailer and then there's another house attached to it. So it was all the living quarters for the musicians and the talent that would be out here creating. Topanga Skyline Studios. I sure hope it's being used again. I've actually come out here and checked out this place um, at least four times and I never see very many cars here. So it makes me think that maybe it's not a studio anymore. But uh, this was all the parking for people like Bob Dylan. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Robert Plant was out here tracking vocals in this historic neighborhood? And I mean, it's really historic because if you literally just go across the street and about a block down that way, there's a famous house that I can't get access to, but it's where Linda Ronstadt and the Birds both took um, extremely memorable photos, um, covers of their albums, but now it's a private home and they have a pretty high gate and you can't get in to see the front section of the house where they recorded it. But I want to come out and at least show you this because it's Topanga Canyon history. Topanga Skyline Studios. Now let's go head off to Michael's house for that barbecue. I've shown you guys this before, but they redecorated the kitty for uh, for the holidays, I guess, so had to show you. It's pretty big. All right, well, I made it to Michael's house. Let's go visit everybody. I got here and found out I was one of the early arrivers, and then Michael said, yeah, we realized that we told different sets of friends different start times. So you were told 2 o'clock, but other people were told 3 o'clock. So just hanging out and enjoying the, uh, the peace and quiet here. And trying out whatever this is. I'll go visit him yeah. and, and hang out with him so he wouldn't be by himself if we put right. the beer. How's the grilling going? Doing great, doing great. Just picking up some stuff. All right, let's go take a look. Michael is, uh, I know he's got ribs and corn on the cob. This is the kind of stuff he lives for, having his friends over for what he calls man activities, which is like the grilling and the drinking beers. <laughs> there everything's marinating in the bags right now. Michael calls these the work beers because he said they don't have enough alcohol content to really do anything to you, but you gotta have them when you're working. Oh, nice, handy. Cool. <laughs> That's not good at all. No, it's not They can open the beer with their teeth? Mm -hmm. Yes. Michael got some new, uh, some new chickens. Two, two of each. Oh yeah. So it will take about six months. Uh, they will do one of two things: either they start laying eggs, or they start to crow. Somebody else will get killed too. And yeah, like you say, they make money. Oh. Is she coming or not coming? All right, Chef Michael has pulled the ribs off the grill here, and we're about to uh, start eating. All right, I've got some of the tri-tips, some of the ribs, mac and cheese, a little bit of the, uh, I'm not sure, it's like a pesto pasta, and of course the old corn on the cob down here. All right, time to head home. Well, I'm getting some gas, and I also stopped off and bought some more uh, shirts and tie-dye supplies because I had a handful of people email me and ask if they could get one. So I might spend tomorrow doing tie-dye, but I won't show you guys. I'll do something else for your vlog. Actually, I might start the tie-dyes tonight. All right, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to start these tonight. I think I'll wash all the shirts and uh, try and spiral them or however I'm going to do them. And I might even put the dye in and let it sit all night and then finish them up tomorrow in tomorrow's vlog. All right, I got all the shirts in the laundry, and I think what I'm going to do is, since there's a big table down in the laundry room, I'm going to do all the spinning and rubber banding down there, and I'll bring it back up, and I'll do all the dyeing in my tub. I'll show you guys what they're going to look like, and then we'll call it a night, and you can see in the morning what they finished up like. So I'll go ahead and see. I'm going to make a little uh, map of how I want to do the colors, and we'll finish this up. All right, I have the tarp laid out, and I'm gonna put the shirts down and start uh, start twisting them. And this time, I think I'm gonna try and do um, 
eight of the pie wedges instead of six, I think I'll get more blasts of color that way. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pinch it right here this time. And there's one. I think on this one I might experiment a little bit. Breck and I noticed that there's a way of doing the swirl where you actually start down here in the corner, so I think I might try that. So I think it's gonna be something like that. Now there's two done. The one on the right is the one that has that corner swirl. Now this one I think we're gonna do the swirl right in the dead center. All right, one more. And I think three out of the four of these are already spoken for at the moment. Now there is another design that I like to do sometimes. I call it the target. And basically what you do with that one is you decide on a center point and then you just pull the whole shirt straight into like a ponytail, like where it's all one long, literally like a ponytail. And then you put your rubber bands up and down that and then you fill up the colors through there. But I feel like the, um, the result is less consistent with what I think it's gonna be. So I'm gonna stick with the swirls on this batch again. All right, we're done. We're gonna take them upstairs and start applying the ink in my tub. All right, there's one. I used two different colors of blue, a green and a purple. Now with this one, I actually used lime green instead of the regular green, so we'll see how different it looks, and I put them in a little different spot. All right, there's number three. I used two different colors of green on that one, so we'll see what that one turns out like. All right, that's it. That's the last one right there. We are gonna put them in uh, saran wrap and call it a night. Well, have a great night, everyone. I know that was totally impromptu. I did not plan on making any more shirts, but I posted that vlog actually today. That's how far ahead I am if you wanna do the math. And, um, and so many people had sent me a message asking if I would make more. I just said, well, I'll make four more and first four to claim them, they're yours. So there you go. We'll see what they look like tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that studio. I wanted to thank Orlando Rodriguez and Deborah Calameja for making contributions to my channel. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye.